Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, the head football coach at Lakeland College. Jim, as usual, on the show, we like to get right to Where it. Where are we at, though, Webbs? I know. Here we are in front of a live studio uh, audience. Yeah, Unbelievable. That's right. So, and they, they have to be here because it's part of the mandatory practice session I gave. What kind of coach is that? You know, having these guys out <laughs> mean, here. Mean, son of a game, exactly. So. But first exactly. off, we got to thank TV8 for coming out yes. here out to the Lakeland College campus pub and doing a live show for us. And yep. uh, um, it should be a lot of fun today. It's a special show, too. We're going to have an hour long edition. We're going to talk about the game, of course, against right. Benedictine. Show some highlights as usual. In the last about, half hour? Of course, player profile. Player profile. No, Bring them up and let them talk. <laughs> it's going to be a little that's scary. Right. So, uh, And they don't know they're coming up yet. That's right. They're going to be pulled out of the audience one by one. Should be a good time. It should be a so, good time. And of course, we're going to recap the season, talk about some of the stats. I know the guys haven't even seen the numbers yet, so it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, so. First off, let's talk about your guys' big vi victory on Saturday. You guys killed Benedictine. Had to go on the road, and your schedule got a little bit messed up, but you guys came away with a nice 61-34 to 34 victory. Yeah, you were there an hour early. That's we were right. there an hour early. <laughs> game was supposed to be noon. Ended up being a 1 o'clock game, so we were there a little early. Um, never know what's going to happen in those type of situations. Our kid's going to be kind of blah, blah. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. And we came out, and, and it was kind of one of those seesaw battles early. You mm -hmm. know, they scored a couple of touchdowns. We kept scoring, which was good. We finally got the lead midway through that first quarter. Kept it throughout the game, but they kept keeping it close enough where we had to keep. We just kept pouring it on before you know it, it ended up being whatever the score was, 61 to 34, whatever it was. Yeah, I don't know what, sc what was the score? 61 to 34. Yes, I know, something like that. But yeah. the kids played great. You know, there was a couple of, like um, I told the kids afterwards, it doesn't matter offensively and defensively what happens. You look back in our season, Carthage game, we didn't play exceptionally well on offense, but the defense played great. Here in this game, they gave up a couple, we gave up a couple touchdowns early. Right. Well, you're not going to get rattled. You know, I had no worry that we weren't going to be able to score. Mm -hmm. You know, I told the defense in the second quarter, you give us one stop, mm -hmm. just one stop, we're going to win this game. Because we weren't going to, I told the offense, we, we're not going to get stopped today. And it, it just ain't going to happen. So it ended up working out, you know, just how, kind of like how we scripted it. Yeah. By that time, the second half, we played a little bit better, you know, on both sides of the ball and ended up getting enough points to, to get out of there with a the win. Mm -hmm. Well, the nice thing about it is you're winning, you moved you guys to 8-2 and two on the season. Right. You guys finished 6-1 and one overall in conference play, second in the line, I Badger football conference. Were you a little worried, though, when they scored on that big play right in the early game, fall yeah. behind 7-0? You know, I told our kids, I said, we, we are, the greatest thing we do is we battle adversity. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what happens. I tell you, don't, if they score, we, who cares? Our job is to score more points than the other team gives up and vice versa. And it didn't matter if they scored. Well, great, they scored. Congrats. It's it's two minutes into the game. Right. We came right back. The big thing is, though, we usually answer people. Mm -hmm. So we answered somebody right away. All, you know, all of a sudden, we answer. They kick up. We kick off. They fumble. We throw a touchdown pass to Bird to make it 14-7. Mm -hmm. and, and we got the lead from then on. So, no, it, it didn't really. I was kind of, I'm mean, like, oh, because we play so well on defense that it's funny because you, you don't expect people to score. Mm -hmm. You really don't. All of a sudden, they score. You're like, that's interesting. Right. And that's because ball like Travis made a great, Travis Church made a great kickoff return to get us in great field position. It took us about, I don't know, five, six plays, you know, to punch it in. And then we kind of got that thing rolling. And we always stayed at least two touchdowns ahead. And then we put, we got a great stop, um, a Gibson interception. It starts at the end of the second quarter. We went a two-minute drill and scored, I think, go up 41-20 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the first quarter again. Singleton scored on a 57-yard pass. Uh, now, this guy was unbelievable. He came, kind of came out of nowhere. He had only 23 catches on right. the year, but he finished with, I think, 15 catches for 260-plus yards. You don't got to keep saying that. You don't <laughs> have to go, we're not going to that way. He, he played. I told the defense, I was like, just, it's, the guy got hot. The quarterback got hot. I mean, he made some great catches. Mm -hmm. The quarterback made some great throws. Now, the funny thing was their offense coordinator got fired week eight. So all the tape we watched had nothing to do with what was going to happen. Oh. They changed their offense somewhat. They were running some – they were not very – sound in terms of offensively and mm -hmm. most teams just throttle them because they try to run the ball out well, all of a sudden they come out they stay in a three wide receiver set and they just kept throwing the ball to the one kid you mm -hmm. know and he made some great plays you know we were there sometimes he can make a great play he can make a great throw mm -hmm. but yeah he, he had an unbelievable day mm -hmm. i think he had like 220 yards by halftime yep. then he had like 40 yards the rest of the game yeah made, so some, took, yeah, made some adjustments and and the, the defensive backs coach is still fired <laughs> just so you know that he's gone our d coordinator almost got ko'd by halftime but besides that you know, he had a great game. You know, I, I told the guy, I said, hey, I'm talking to Coach Sell on the headset. I'm going, that kid, he's on fire. You know, mm -hmm. Dad Pat, he's in fuego right now. Mm -hmm. I got, but they weren't going to catch us. It wasn't going to happen. That's why I never really got totally worried, like, oh, no, we're not. They weren't stopping us. You know, we, we ended up with 536 yards of offense or something. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't going to matter. They just make the score look a little closer than it probably should have been. Yep. Well, the nice thing is, we mentioned you guys came right back. Brent Lukey ran it in from 11 yards out. That kept a seven play, 46 right. yard drive just three minutes later. Right, and you were at the game, so you saw right. it. So we came right back to that kickoff. I think that made it 7 7 or whatever. They fumbled, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we, great job in kickoff return or kickoff coverage. We fumbled, they fumbled. We come out, we ended up calling a short pass play. Mm -hmm. They ended up playing a six minute, seven man blitz look, and they pressed Sean on the outside. 
and Sean Barron just beat him, you know, flat out beat him. Brett made a great throw. And made a, Bird made a great adjustment to the ball too on a he over really outside shoulder. So he's, he's a, a former favorite. baseball player. He's a former yeah. baseball player. <laughs> How good was he? He he was good when he was healthy. Yeah, which, <laughs> he's kind of old. Same thing for us too. Kind of old. Like, kinda old. <laughs> he's like 36. <laughs> But he did a great job, and he beat him right away to put a 14 to 7. But it was a great play. I mean, I just watched the tape again of the game, and you'll see the highlights in the second part of the show. He beat that kid quickly, and that yeah. show was over. Brett made a great throw. He had a blitz in his face. He made a great throw, and, and we got going. And from that moment on, they weren't going to. Yeah. It looked good. It looked nice, and the kids, and the other team played well in spurs, but it wasn't going to happen. Well, the big turning point was the second quarter when you guys outscored him 27-14. Uh, Marcus Dunham had a big quarter for you. He scored a couple times early on, right? The second quarter at the 14-30 mark, he took it in from nine yards out. Yeah, and, and when you watch the highlight of that play, we had a run in power, which we run about 2,000 times this year. Mm -hmm. And Marcus runs his play, and we get a great block, and the, the safety's right there in the hole, about three, and Marcus just runs him over, barely breaks stride. He just runs a flat over touchdown. And that's just the way you know we play. We always talk about being physical. And that was a very physical quarter for us. Mm -hmm. We kind of physically got the momentum back. And you're, like I said, he had a big, I think he had two touchdowns that quarter. You know, and we played really well in that second quarter to get the momentum back on our side. It's been kind of a change we've seen this year, too. I know in the past, I think we've been more of a finesse-oriented type team. Yeah. And it seems like this year we've had a little bit more, uh, yeah, it helped. like you said, just run, run right through people. Yeah, we did. We, and our O-line played really well. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and the last couple of games, I think, if you look at the stats, I think the last three games we averaged 52 points a game. And gave up like 10 or something or 12 or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, in that sense. But we, we're a physical football team, and it doesn't matter. I always joke with you, Marcus is 150 pounds or something mm -hmm. like that. And people always, and he just runs people over. Mm -hmm. The O line, huge holes. And we rushed for a little over 200 yards because we ended up throwing for like 326 or 318 right. or something. But, but that's, we, we gain control on both sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. we're, we're a strong physical team. These kids like to be physical. And, we're physical in practice, and it carries over to the game. Mm -hmm. Well, Benedictine came right back. Singleton, again, a five-yard pass. We'll try not to mention his name too much. Denham came going right back, though. I'm yeah. uh, going to have to. He exactly. scored four times. But Denham came right back again. He had a six-yard run, and that completed an eight-play, 58-yard drive. That made it, uh, well, that was at the 643 mark again, right. too, midway through the second quarter. Yeah, and I think, I don't know, I think we scored again somewhere on the line. And yep. The biggest momentum switch was Gibson's interception at the end of the second quarter. Yep. They were trying to score to get, I think, I don't know, it was 34-20. 34-20. They're trying to score. Gibby makes great play, intercepts. We hit the ball about the 35, and we go, hey, you know, we didn't even go for what. We didn't even go in a hurry up. We end up, they go to a prevent defense. We stay in our pro style offense, and we, Marcus gashes for 12, then we throw a three step route. Marcus gashes for six, we throw a three step route. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, we're on the 25 yard line. We throw a ball to Bird again, makes a great catch, doesn't get in for some unforeseen reason. I'm not mm -hmm. sure about that. He's in the crowd, so I can rip him for that. <laughs> but he gets the ball on the one inch line. I think Marcus ended up. Actually, it's the third touchdown of the quarter, yeah. actually. There, yeah, so. Marcus' third touchdown of the quarter. On one, yeah. Yeah. So I think that drive took about a minute, four. I don't even know what the, what yeah. the stats say. It says 27 seconds. That was it. Yeah, so. exactly. So it was a great drive, and that really got the momentum back. Uh, excuse me, 20, a minute 29 at the 27 second yep. mark. So, so it was a minute. So it's 41 20 at halftime, yeah. and then we said, hey, you know, we're okay. I think one play that can't be overlooked in the second quarter, too, is Jeff Taft running back uh, a kickoff 86 yards. Yeah, and you'll see that in the highlight. And that kickoff, it's hilarious because they played so, they came inside. Jeff set it up really well. Great block, and, and he, I think he's untouched. Mm -hmm. He goes down the sideline with four guys running with him for an 80-yard. You know, we've been really close all year. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been really close breaking him. It was great to get him, especially being a senior, but to let him gash that one. It was great block, and he just untouched. You know, mm -hmm. he's jogging the last 25 yards because nowhere in the area goes. Yep, yep. Well, you guys had a 41-21 lead at the break. What do you say at this point? Because I know you got your offense is right where you need to be. Said you had to make some defense adjustments. What do you say to the guys? I just told them, don't, don't worry about it. We're up by 21 points. Mm -hmm. There's no difference if it's 41-20 or 21 nothing. What's the difference? It doesn't matter. I said, they're not, like I said for the 12th time, they're not going to, we're going to score a lot of points today. Mm -hmm. So just keep that kid under control, you know. And, and it was a weird game because they were talking smack and they were cheap shot. And, and it, was just, it, was, it was hilarious because they were getting pummeled and they're talking. So it makes you even want to pummel them more. You know, and our big guys just start pummeling them, and that's what we do here. And, I don't, and it's fun. That's what's fun to watch. When you watch tape, people are just getting crushed, mm -hmm. and they're still talking. So it was not, not it wasn't hard to motivate. Our kids weren't excited about being up 41-20. They're like, Coach, let's keep going. And we did. We ended up outscoring them with 20 to 20 to 14, I think, in the second half. And yeah, yeah. Well, you guys came back midway through the third quarter, kind of a back and forth tight game until the 501 mark when Lupke again ran it in from two yards out. Yeah, I ran a little option. It was a good drive because we ended up punting, which we don't. The kid, it was the funniest thing was, I know we got to go to break here in a minute or two, but he looks, it's fourth and four, that first drive of the second half. Mm -hmm. It's fourth and four on our own 35, and I say punt team, and half the team looks at me like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> punt. Mm -hmm. So we would go for it every, we'd go for it on fourth down probably 30 times this year. Mm -hmm. Mike, you got to freaking punt sometime <laughs> in this game. So we had a punt, but then we got that drive back. We had a great drive, and I think it went up 48-20. I think he might have scored. 47-21. 47-21, yeah. and, and then they scored, and it, it didn't matter. 
shut up. <laughs> just thought I'd throw it out there again, too. That kid's a senior, though. Just a yeah, that's a good thing as well, too. But the nice thing, and again, the fourth quarter, you guys really control those again. Uh, Jeff Taft really had a great year for you. Taft and Barron scored in the fourth quarter. Those guys had big years for you, a big year for you yeah. all season. Taft comes in with a five-yard touchdown pass. Great, Ken, you'll see that was a great catch on a fade route. Mm -hmm. You know, we call the play out of timeout. Um, we call a fade, you know, a three-step fade. And we throw it, Jeff makes an unbelievable catch. Then we come back a drive or two later. We get a fourth down again, like on our 25. We call a three vertical look mm -hmm. and tap and Bird's open. Brent throws it to Bird, makes a great catch. The best part was that kid was talking smack, saying he's all conference, you never throw on him. <laughs> well, we just threw on you for a touchdown, so shut up and let's go. Yeah, you know, those guys from Chicago like to talk too much. They so do, anyway. you're a Chicago <laughs> kid, and you're a Chicago kid, it's <laughs> a problem. Well, you guys, uh, at this point, are leading 54-28. They come back, score one more time, 54-34. That's the 10 minutes to go uh, in the game. At this point, the game is ISO. But what, are you a little nervous at all? No, Not really or anything? No, because it wasn't. They they were never going to catch us. Yeah. I said once we got a 21-point lead, they could score all they want because we were going to score all we mm -hmm. wanted to. So I think that's when Bird caught that pass. Yep, 31-yard pass. It's a fourth down play too, and we yep. we were unbelievable. The funniest thing we look at our stats. We're an unbelievable touchdown on fourth down. Not just mm -hmm. get it. Cause we sometimes call it vertical stuff and say. Hey, you know, for, let's let's go after it. and we did, and, and he made a great catch in the end zone on on one of their you know those kids talking, and it was great to go up that much, and, and and the game was over. Well, we got about three minutes left here before we go to break, so let's go ahead and review some of the stats from the game. You guys really controlled the entire game, as you mentioned. You guys had 318 yards passing. They did have 319 um, overall as well. You guys had 208 on the ground, and they had 54. And right, I think they that's where they the can do anything right in the running, and they exactly. It was funny because you look at the time of possession. They got us more in time of possession because mm -hmm. they actually ran the ball occasionally for nothing. Mm -hmm. It just ate up a little clock. They had a lot of third down completions, which helped their time of possession, and and we didn't need them. You know, we had a couple fourth down conversions, but we ended up with 500. I think it's the second game in a row we've been over 500. Aurora, mm -hmm. we were right up in that five, high yep. four, 500 range too. So right. it was really great. Yeah, 526. They had 373 right. total yards. You guys had 26 first downs. They had 20. Uh, I think the only one, uh, again, all positives. This is one thing we talked about. Day in and day out this year, you guys had uh, completely dominated the statistical columns, all positive yeah. across the board. The only one negative comment in you guys, uh, column, you guys are the Oakland Raiders here again, too. Nine penalties for 174 yards. That's just poor officiating in this league. <laughs> I'm telling you that much. Right. We, I told our kids, we get, and I tell them, you know, the best team sometimes, if you're the most physical team, you're, mm -hmm. you're tiptoeing that line of going over the edge. And sometimes mm -hmm. they call stuff. I mean, we get some stupid penalties, too, some offside and so on. But a lot of times we're just being physical. And we're blocking his people, and they call a couple. And I just tell them, don't worry about it. We'll get it. Mm -hmm. First and 25, who cares? It gives us more yards to work. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll cut down a little of those stupid penalties. But, yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to look at our total penalty. That's not a real – we're a discipline program. We have about 2,000 penalties. <laughs> well, the other thing, too, on the defense side of the ball, uh, sometimes we overlook this a little bit, too. You guys, again, had another total team effort. Yeah, we did. And, and that's the way we've been going all year. If one side of the ball struggling a little bit, the other side jumps up. And special teams, were, were, for the most part, is good right. again. And we really harped in the last couple of weeks of the season. So it was a team effort. Mm -hmm. I think you had just we'll, we'll, we'll run off some of the guys are out here again today, yeah. too. But uh, Jacob Vigilante, Roosevelt Moore led your team with eight total tackles right. on the day. They really had good games for you. A couple sacks, uh, Johnny Ferguson and uh, Mike Novotny. Yeah. Name we haven't mentioned too much. You guys had a couple sacks yeah. there as well. Um, interceptions, Gibson had a couple there, yeah, too. Yeah, nice picks for you as well. Yeah, we had yep. two. He did a nice job. Yep. So you guys uh, really, again, had a total team effort. Yeah. And like I said, you went over some of the offense stats. And I think the fun thing with our senior receiving core, I mean, three of our, three of our guys up there, um, Sean had six, Jeff Taff had six, and James had three. Right. And we had 18 completions. We had four guys catch balls. It was just kind of, we were just spread out. It ended up being six, six, three, and Travis had three catches. So mm -hmm. it was nice to see those kids spread out. Rushing was kind of all, Brent had 50 some yards, Marcus had 90 some yards, Travis had 40 some yards. So it was really great, you know, to get a lot of those guys involved. Okay. We're getting the sign here that we got to go to break. So what we're going to do when we come back is go ahead and take some look at some highlights and go from there. Stay with us. We'll be right back. More on the Lake and Locker. <laughs> Across the country, Americans are rolling up their sleeves to help each other. Showing true strength of character and kindness and compassion. Spirit and enthusiasm. Together, we make America strong. Find out how you can serve, no matter where you are in life, at nationalservice.org. It's your world. It's your chance to make it better. Apply online at nationalservice.org and answer the President's call to service. Having twins can be a handful. Buy one, get one free. So when I decided to go back to school, I needed to find one that fit my, our lifestyle. Lakeland College was the perfect place. They offer an easy to manage schedule and counselors to help me anytime. Evening classes at Lakeland don't tie my, <laughs> our life in knots. 
ever consider a double major? Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, the head football coach at Lakeland College. Z, we were just talking about the complete domination you guys had over Benedictine, finishing off a great year, finishing 8-2. and two, I think that's their best record since 1997 right. when yes. the Muskies finished 10-0. and 0. It was, and that's what we talked about after. As a coach, you always want you want 10-0. I mean, that's just the way, as a baseball coach, you do too. Sure. But once we lost in Cornell, Wisconsin, we had to say, now we have an opportunity to be the winningest team since 1997. Mm -hmm. and, and thank goodness we got that. The kids played great, and they deserve everything. You know, they got this year. And it's just tough in football because if you have one game where you play hard but you don't get the job done that you want to get done, you don't get that chance like in baseball and basketball to play a home and a home or go back at them. Because we play in Cordero, Wisconsin right now, I guarantee you we're going to win. Mm -hmm. And we, this is the way we're playing right now. But you don't get that shot. Right. And on that given day, they played better than we did on that on that given day. And that's what's tough. Yeah. Well, we had talked about this earlier. You guys are really only about four, five, six plays away from being undefeated right. this year. And we were. You know, mm -hmm. Oshkosh is right there. You know, Couple plays here and there, really one player, two plays, and uh, Concordia, Wisconsin, the same way. Two or three plays, they gash us once or twice. We just missed a touchdown once or twice, and, and that game was closer, of course, in the score indicated. We outgained them, mm -hmm. and we really outplayed them in, in most of the game except for the big plays, mm -hmm. and that's what happened. Yep. Well, I know we're going to go ahead and see yep. if we can see some of the highlights right here so you can explain what happened this past Saturday. Again, this is Benedictine at Lyle. Coach Wars was the highlights aren't bad. He's, they aren't good. He's player. This is uh, Jeff Tapp catching a power pass, makes nice plays, third down. Makes a great play. You always, Jeff never lets that first guy hit him. Here's Brent scoring on the option to start us off. That kid, they just can't. He's 6'4", 240. You ain't got to tackle him, Webb, sometimes. <laughs> this is a kickoff return, kickoff coverage right after that touchdown. Great kickoff, great kickoff coverage. We call it the pain train coming. <laughs> and we like to bring the funk a little bit. Great job. We get a fumble. We get the rock back right away. And like you said, we went right at him. We didn't mean to. Ended up working that way. Great job by Brent. A blitz in his face. Sean Barron, great catch. Touchdown. He, gets, um, I, he almost gets a 15-yard high-stepping penalty again. That's okay. Here we go, three verticals from our own goal line. James Hayes, great throw by Brent. Great job by James, who almost takes it 95 yards. Ends up getting 55, 58 yards. Great protection. You know, great job. This is, I think, one of Michael Gibson's two interceptions. His first one. Quarterback throws up for grabs. Mike makes a great play. We get the pick. Here's Marcus Dunham running the watch. this. great block, and Marcus just runs his cat over. Bam! He's done. That's 150 pounds, bringing it. <laughs> Bring it away. Here's a bootleg. Great job by Sean. Watch Greg Dorian, our backside guard, coming. He blows this little kid up right there. Bam. Get out of here. Great job by Sean to get about 12. Driving down again. Marcus Denham again on power. You know, right down. Great surge by the O line. Touchdown. And I think the greatest thing was watching our receivers get excited for running plays because it's tough to sometimes convince those guys. You got you to be physical in the run game. They did a great job, and they, you know, we love scoring. Great job by our defense blowing that kid up a little bit. It's, it's tough on the defense. We have four or five guys around the rock so much. Kickoff return. Watch the two outside guys. They, go, they get sucked inside. Jeff gets untouched. And we got a posse driving right there. Travis, Michael Gibson, Jed. We're all, Mike Christian's coming with them. ADR touch. Great. We've been close all year. And that's a great job by Jeff. Great job by the whole team right there. Defense this is Michael Gibson's second interception right here, right before the half. Great job to get us a 70, on the 25-yard line. Great job. Sean Barron would get a fade with about 40 seconds left. Great catch. Keeps his feet in bounds. Gets us to the one-foot line where Marcus Denham gets his third touchdown on the half. And that's just great. They had nine guys in the box. We really don't care. We're going to run right at you anyways. Great run by here by Marcus. Great job by the O-line. A couple of fakes. We're going to get 25 yards again. And this, is, uh, this is Brent with the second touchdown uh, on the game. 25 option, we call it. Great job, great push by the whole left side of the line. Defensively, I think, if I remember this, a good job. There, that Singleton right there finally gets blasted by Gibby. Drop the ball, it's a great job of get, getting the ball, getting the ball separated from him. This, this is a good job. Travis, great job in the option block. Jeff, great job blocking downfield. And Brent takes it down to the five yard line. Now we get a little tight copy. This great job of pursuit by our defense, by Rose. And that's, you know, that's borderline right there. They don't call it. <laughs> Here's Jeff Tapp making a great catch. Just a great catch. That's a great catch. Great catch. Here in our four wide, great job. James Hayes blocking for Jeff. Sean's downfield blocking. Jeff Gash. He's, he's, it's tough to tackle him. He's five foot two, coach. And he's tough to get him down. Great job by Brent keeping this play alive. They actually cover four verts here, or three verts here. Sean does a good job of coming back to the ball. Brent does a good job. 
and the next play, I think when we score a touchdown here, I think it's the next play. We're in near flex left. They play cover two. If you look up top of the screen, Jeff's wide open and Sean's open. Brent decides to go outside. Great catch. Gets on top of that kid. Touchdown. Yep, kind of gave him a little knee lift on that top. They run a little option here, and that ain't going to happen. We're too fast. We're too fast on defense. You're not going to run outside on us. It ain't going to happen. Mike Nevada, just a sack by Mike, I think, at the end of, near the end of the game. Watch this kick get snapped pretty good here. Ah, that's the next one. I'm sorry. There's quarter I can snap. I think the last one we have is, is Michael coming from the outside. Kid gets a little net snap bang. Bam, right there. That's a good job. <laughs> that's a great job. Great job by those guys. It's fun. It's always, you got a lot of highlights when you win. It's always fun to watch highlights when you win. Well, I think the neat thing about this team is, again, just watching the highlights here, day, uh, play in and play out. You mentioned somebody else's name. It's just not the same guy. That no, and it's on. not. And when, you, when we go over the, the season's ending stats, you got a lot of guys doing a lot of different things. Yep. Different guys making interceptions, different guys making tackles, different guys returning kicks and punts, different guys running the ball, mm -hmm. you know, different guys catching the ball. Might be Jeff Tapp, three catches, this game Sean Barron, 12. Mm -hmm. you, know, you never know. Marcus Denham, 100 yards, Travis might get 50. Kenny Grun, you got 80 last week or 70. So a lot of different guys are doing a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. That's what's fun. It keeps everybody in the game, too. Yep. One thing we're going to do, we talked about, we're going to go ahead and, and, and review some of these stats and talk about them. I know it's the first the time these stats? guys have actually seen them. Yeah, yeah I, don't stats, think I, so. I don't think any of our kids have seen any of the season stats. Yeah. I think one thing that Let really jumps out, the very first stat, top of the page here, you guys scored 401 points and you held your opponents to 167 points on the year, which comes out to 40.1 points per game scored for you guys in 16.7 that you held right, your opponents to. You're going to win a lot of games when you got a plus minus of 24 points. Right. Scoring 40 points a game is a great accomplishment. I think when the season ends up, we're going to be in the top 10 in the country, mm -hmm. you know, right around that 10, 11, 12 mark. Scoring wise, scoring over 40, that's a lot of points. And sometimes it's like you get so used to it, and it's not easy to score touchdowns. Mm -hmm. But our kids did a great job. Scoring over 40 points is, is amazing. Defense did a great job. They, and 16 points a game is nothing. Yep. You know, it's nothing. That was great. I know Coach Creek and I ended up doing the NCAA stats yeah. this morning, and you guys are just ranked in, in so many different categories right. as a team and, and as individuals. And that's what's nice about that is when you, you play well as a team, you're going to get team accomplishments along with individual accomplishments in the NCA records and in mm -hmm. their stats. So it's nice when people go on the websites now and check out, they all of a sudden they see Lakeland, first off, 8-2. Mm -hmm. I think uh, USA ranked us 35th in the country last week. I think mm -hmm. someone said it right there. So you're starting to get national exposure. Now all of a sudden you've you got one of the top offenses in the country, one of the top defenses, top mm -hmm. 25 defense in the country. People are going to start seeing that name over and over and over. Mm -hmm. I think the next thing that jumps out on this sheet is just the balance you guys had in your game. Isn't that you amazing? Said, I looked at that. Yeah. was amazing. 2,154 2, yards rushing and 22-15 passing. Right, and you don't go in the season going, we have to be even. Mm -hmm. We talked about balance, but you know, you go to the Oshkosh game, we threw for 300 and some yards. Mm -hmm. We go to this game, we threw for 300, rushed for two, or 200. Some other games, we rushed for 400, threw for 120. So that was amazing when I looked at that. What do you say? I think it was 2,150 we rushed for. Yep, yeah. Exactly. 2,150 yards rushing mm -hmm. and 2,200 and so on past. It makes it hard for another team to prepare for right. you guys. And, you know, and every game's different. Some games we know we're going to be able to punish people. Some games it's going to take a little while, but mm -hmm. we're going to run the ball. There's going to be opportunities in the passing game. Mm -hmm. And then we just go, we do some comparison stats. You guys ran for 215 yards per game, which also puts you in the NCAA stats. Right. And you guys held your opponents to 105 per game. And that's just great. If you, can stop, more. if you can stop a team from rushing, mm -hmm. you know, I don't even remember a team that rushed the ball well on us all year. Mm -hmm. Oshkosh had a first half. Okay, the Carthage kid had a good game, but besides him, he didn't. They didn't do anything else. I think he ended up being Carthage's all-time career rushing well, they, leader. So well. I mean, that was, yep. and he didn't do. I mean, we did a great job on him. You just can't run the ball. And I think what helps our defense is in practice, we go ones on ones for mm -hmm. four, five, six, seven snaps a, a day in practice, and you're seeing really good guys on really good guys, mm -hmm. and they're, we're going to be physical. We're going to run the ball at them four times in a row, and and, and and vice versa. They're seeing a great offense we're seeing a great defense now all of a sudden they get out to the game and everyone's slow motion mm -hmm. you're like geez always he ain't as fast as marcus they don't most teams don't have 300 pound tackles like we do they're not gonna they just don't have them mm -hmm. and if they do they're they can't move mm -hmm. and so that's what i think helps us a lot well again we just mentioned the rushing stats you got to mention the passing as well 221 yards per game passing you held your opponents to 158 yards per yeah game. so i mean our defense gave up 250 yards on average a game Somewhere around there, we had 436 or something in games. Right, so that, that was exactly it. You guys averaged 436, and you held your opponents to 264. I mean, you're almost 200 yards yeah, per so, game. Yeah, so, I mean, you're, you're getting a lot more yards, a lot more plays. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what helps us, too. We'd go some sustained drive where our defense wouldn't have to go every three and out. Um, here we are back. So we'd have some one-play drives for touchdown. We also had some 12, 14, 11 play drive, and our defense is like, let's go. You know, they're getting, they're getting bored over there because they're not on the field. Mm -hmm. They come out, their job is to get off the field as fast as possible. Right. I think the next big stat that jumps out is, is turnover margin. You guys really were unbelievable this yeah, year. You guys know, only put lost, that end up. Yeah, know. you guys only lost eight. Well, you were a plus 24 overall right. the season. So that's, uh, you know, And average. that's in the top 
10, top it, 10 in the country. Top 10 in the country. We're just 2.4 a game yep, somewhere around exactly. there, which yep. is huge. And the big thing you talk about, I was listening to, I think, uh, Bill Callahan, the coach of the Raiders, talking about, uh, he started, he goes, I realize that the biggest stat is turnover margin, mm -hmm. your turnover ratio, margin or whatever. And we're plus 2.4, which means, you know, I was talking to Coach DeBlock, our running backs coach, and, and our running backs, we lost four fumbles all year in the running backs at total. And we fumbled a few other times. We only lost four as a whole running back. Mm -hmm. For as many times that we ran it, that's amazing. I think we only threw nine interceptions. Right. I think. Right. Wasn't it eight it or nine? Ten. Ten, actually, ten yeah. interceptions. Yeah. So we did a great job. And our defense is very opportunistic. So yep. I had to spit that word out. Well, the other stat that really stands out is you guys had twice as much penalty yards as your opponents. <laughs> Physical play, Webb. It's going to happen sometime. That's just, you know what, though? It gives an opportunity to gain more yards on offense. That's right. There that's you what go. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> but what, what, what was it? You guys had uh, 87 penalties for 996 yards while your opponents We didn't had get 1,000? <laughs> just under. Just under. <laughs> we go one more off sides. We got how many? Nine, 97? Uh, 996. And they had 48 oh. penalties for 462. So quite a difference there. Nine, wait, wait, a minute, wait a minute, let's go back to that one again. How many do we have? 87 penalties for 996 yards. 8.7 a game, yards. that's not bad. How yeah. many did they have? Uh, 48 for 462. When a physical team plays a soft team, it happens like that, whatever I'm telling you. Oakland Raiders. Um, we're the Oakland Raiders. We're, we're the Oakland Raiders, Miami Hurricanes, all those guys kind of mixed into one. Yep. But it is, I said, we, we eliminate the stupid penalties. I sure. mean stupid in the sense of jumping off sides on either side of the ball. That's what a little bit mm -hmm. I can the, I mean, I remember in this game, I think Sam, he got a, Sam Shanner got a 15 yard penalty for a, mm -hmm. a, a shot to the head and a quarterback. And, you know, I mean, he was there, he made a great play. They, they said he thought he led it with his head. That's just a, that's an aggressive play. You just mm -hmm. say, hey, Sam, you just watch, you know, watch head-to-head -head contact and we'll be okay. <laughs> we had one, I think the one penalty we got, I think we had 30 yards on one play in this game. Mm -hmm. We had a 15 yard, I mean, and there were some kids getting blown up in that play. And, but we do. We got to do something. Yeah, we only got a couple minutes left here before we got to go to break. I think the other big stat that we have to talk about too is that you guys scored 56 touchdowns while your opponents only scored 22. Yeah, and that's that's a huge. Chance. I think sometimes the points sound great, 401 to whatever 167, right. but all of a sudden here, 56 touchdowns we scored. Mm -hmm. What they scored 20, 22. 22. Yep. And that's a huge. That's a huge differential. Yep. Yeah. Well, one other thing that we got to talk about too, because we don't get much chance to talk about, is Casey Jodrowski in the punting game. He really yeah. did a nice job for you, even though he didn't have to use you too many. You guys didn't Thank have to goodness. use him too many times. I told Casey, I love you, but I hate you. If I see you a lot on T, uh, if I see you a lot, Casey, we're not playing very well in offense. Mm -hmm. But he did a great job when he got out there, making plays and, and doing a good job in the punting game. Mm -hmm. And that was that was we had a lot of good special teams. Punting was our best special team, or we didn't get anything blocked. Mm -hmm. We blocked a few, but we were we were very good. If we had a punt, he'd boom one somewhere. Mm -hmm. Plus he's Polish. Oh, of course, there you go. Yeah. So he's gonna start. <laughs> he started but by the time he got on campus. He was a starter. Yep. Yeah. No problem. Well, it showed off a strong leg. What we're going to yep. do is we're going to bring up some of these guys at the next half of the show here, Z. So it's going to be kind of interesting. I know they don't even know who it's going to be. No, yet, they don't. So. But uh, no, stay no. with us. We'll be right back with more on the Lake of Locker Room. Properly inflating my tires burns less fuel and saves me money on gas. Yeah, I'm saving Mother Nature from pollution, but more importantly, she saved me 11 bucks. Ow! Environmental Defense, get green. By keeping my car regularly tuned, I save money on gas and repairs. That also means cleaner air. You know, feels good to help save the cash planet. Environmental Defense, get green. For more tips, go to getgreen.com. There's a new experience around every corner as you discover Wisconsin. Discover Wisconsin like you've never seen before. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Lake and Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, and you can see we changed the set around. And Z, we got quite a few guys up here. Why don't you guys go? Yeah, we talked about reactions. asking some guys. That was the first thing I pulled out with our captain. The captains, we vote on them. You know, the kids vote on them beginning of the season, or beginning of our season, in a sense. And, and Nick Fox, starting offensive tackle for us. Over there, Roosevelt Moore in the back, starting linebacker for us. Brent Luke, our starting quarterback. And James Taylor starting wide receiver. All right. So we got a mixture. We got a little mixture. All right. You got a good mix here. We got uh, uh, got you guys on the hot seat. You guys don't know where we're going to go with these questions. Brent, you got the You don't know where you're going to go. Yet, do you? <laughs> That's oh, right. It's going to be kind of fun here. See what happens. I got to ask you the first question. You got a new coach coming in. You're a fifth year senior. 
What do you ex what do you think? What do you expect? Are you a little nervous, a little afraid? And the other thing too, being a quarterback as well, in a system that always threw the ball, now all of a sudden you got to hand the ball off a little bit more. Were you a little bit uh, wor worried about that? Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I was only nervous for a little bit until coach came in and uh, James Hayes and I interviewed him. And right when he walked in, I mean, it was complete confidence in him. And from right there, we knew that we believed him right away. Whatever he told us and whatever he said to us from uh, the program he came to, we believed in. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where I gained my confidence um, from this throughout this past season uh, when he came in and talked to us about um, bringing in the run game more than the pass or to um, complement our pass and attack. That was uh, a big part of it because as us four have been a part of a program that passed the ball in the past couple of years, um, we've been successful basically individually, but not um, as a team. Mm -hmm. And I think um, this past year with bringing the run to complement our pass that, you know, we just wanted to win. We wanted to go on a big note and we were sick of having these like five and five records, six and four. You know, we wanted to be a great team. And I think uh, with the run that he brought um, to complement our pass that helped us a lot this year. I think you really said it very well. Z, you want to probably interject there a little bit too? But. Oh, you know, Brent, the great thing I remember most about Brent was here's Brent, a very strong, religious kid, you know, doesn't swear much. Well, I sometimes use choice words at practice by chance. I don't mean to. <laughs> by the end of the season, Brent was swearing. And that's how much I screwed him up. So I forgot about the other stuff. Even Brent got the field. But the thing about Brent was if you look at his last four games, or last three games, we end up throwing. We have one interception, which is a Hail Mary against Greenville. We end up throwing for 850 some yards and like nine touchdowns in the last three games and and I and I, I think the big thing with those guys especially with Brown was they had never got a lot of individualistic coaching in terms of footwork as always everything was um, scheme wise in a sense so we're our whole coaching staff was just hey we got to do fundamental things and hope that what pans out but the biggest thing is getting your older kids to believe in a coach and if these guys didn't believe we were going down the wrong you know, down the wrong what do you want down the wrong river down the wrong stream or whatever but Brent just bought into it he, he did what we did and, and he said, hey, we're going to do it. And he ended up at the end of the season. I mean, we're, he was good all year. He became really great, you know. And Well, I think one thing we talked about on some previous shows is the ability of Brent to throw down downfield because we yeah. haven't really seen it too often because you've been doing all these short timing routes, everything like that that you guys have done the past few years. And all of a sudden, we get a chance to, you get a chance to showcase your arm. How would you feel about that? And I'm sure we're going to talk to you about that in a little bit too, James. So, No, it was great because in years past, we, like you said, we had all these little out, short out routes or blitz beaters. But with this past year and the system that he brought, it gave us a chance to go deep. And I mean, I was always confident in my arm. And I never, like you said, got to showcase it or whatever. But uh, with this offense, with the play action passes, we always had guys going deep. And this year, I, I feel more confident because he felt confident in me. And even when he came um, to school and we interviewed him, he said that um, he's going to give us the choice, even audibles if the defenders bumped up man to man on a receiver real tight, that we can, you know, like audible it to go into to a deep route, mm -hmm. and that made me feel real confident myself that I had trust from the coach mm -hmm. that never even knew me before this year. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and pass that microphone back to James? Let's see what James has to say. James, I think the biggest transition for you, though, I think, is coming in, and all of a sudden, instead of getting the ball thrown your way 40, 50 times, all of a sudden you're only going to get the ball. 30 times a year. I don't know what your final stats where we can look those up, but but uh, how is were you nervous about that? Because one thing I think is really cool about this team and why it all came together, and this is from an outsider looking in, is just so the someone fact who that knows nothing about football. Exactly, you there you go. I know nothing about football. Say. You know, well, there's my disclaimer. But it was just kind of <laughs> neat to just kind of neat to see you guys come together as a team because, like Brent, and you guys were shaking your head when he's the answer, and you guys are just kind of you know sick of losing or being 500. I should say more than anything else. But were you nervous about that from your perspective of being a wide receiver and all of a sudden you know you, you knew you weren't going to get the ball? As much, but you're going to be relied upon to block downfield a little bit more. Well, I would say any good receiver that wants to be good wants the ball in their hand in mm -hmm. any situation. And um, I wanted to be the guy that the ball came in my hand. Mm -hmm. But this man came here and he convinced us that if you put the team first, we will win. And I bought into it mm -hmm. and I flushed everything that I had about myself. And sometimes it does get frustrating for anybody. Sure. But you have to remember what is the goal here. And I always remembered. And seeing my my teammates catch the ball and, and me blocking, and because of me doing my job, mm -hmm. gets them to score, that's the only thing that I, I begin to love. And now I like blocking now. You know, I like talking <laughs> junk and, and pushing some guys around. But we bought into his program. Yep. And um, I'm glad he came because now we're a great team. Yeah, that's really cool. And that was the biggest sell, Webbs. The biggest thing, the biggest sell was when you go into a four or five wide passing team, your number one sell is first off. Running back, wise, you have to find some guys to carry the to carry the rock. Mm -hmm. The old line will be excited because mm -hmm. they get to come off the ball. They'll always be excited. Hey, yeah, we need to do that. That's yeah. that's what I'm built for. 
uh, God gave me 300 pounds, let's use it, you know, mm -hmm. in, in a way. But the receivers are the ones who had 40 catches each or 50 catches each. And now you got to say, now, man, you might not get, there might be a game you go and you catch one ball mm -hmm. or no ball or two balls. But you do your job. And the greatest thing by the end of the season was you'd see kids, James, Sean Barron, Jeff Tapp, they're getting as excited about making a block. You see their hands up. Yeah. And when they make a great player, the biggest thing, Jeff got the bubble, one of his last catches he caught in his career. James made the block to spring him. Sean blocked. We gained 20 yards on a bubble. And Jeff's going, great job, James. They, you know, mm -hmm. And they're just, they're all into it together. And even James, I remember, I think it was Greenville, I think Tapp caught his third touchdown pass. And James like, that's my boy. Now that's my boy. And instead of saying, that should be me. No, that's my boy. Mm -hmm. And, and I always re refer, especially those three guys, as their own little clique. You know, it doesn't matter if one guy caught six, the other guy caught. Together, combined, is where you look at those three guys. Mm -hmm. How many catches did they have together? How many yards did they have? Yep. And that was really a great deal by those three. They were the biggest thing that they convinced everybody else, hey, we can roll with this now. That yeah, was pretty cool. James, you had a great play on Saturday, too, the, game, the pass over the middle. Were you thinking you could break that one? <laughs> Honestly, if Luke uh, didn't throw up behind you, 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 you know? <laughs> no, Honestly, um, when I seen the ball, I caught it and I said, "Body run!" <laughs> and my legs, my legs didn't go like they used to. And I thought I was gone. And they said, "I know." I see the guys talking to me, and I got on the field and looked at coach like, "I'm old." <laughs> so, but it, it was wonderful to touch the rock. But yeah, I'm old. <laughs> well, it's great to have you guys. Obviously, Brett, you know, you're really lucky. You guys have just a chance to. You know, throw to three great receivers over the course of the time here, and, and just to see the development of Jay's and Je James and Jeff and uh, Sean Barron, of course. I mean, how do you feel about that? If you can go ahead and pass it back over here to Brent. No, it's been great the past couple of years. I mean, I've always had confidence, and and you know that you know if a play breaks and it breaks down, and you have to scramble and roll, it was kind of neat this year because we we're always on the same page. I mean, no matter what, somehow they found a way to get open. You know, I wasn't always that I got the best ball to him where I threw the ball incomplete, but, you know, we were on the same page at least. Yeah, you had three athletic receivers. It was unbelievable that they could make adjustments, you know, on the go, so to speak. So let's go ahead and pass it over to Nick. We're going to talk about the defense here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we right. go. That's the big boy on the mic. All right, well, we got the offensive lineman here, and I think one thing you guys have to be proud of, I think, and I think that Brent was especially proud of you guys, is last year he'd get the ball, and, I mean, he's basically, we'd say the old chuck and duck when we're watching mm -hmm. on the side, but, you know, he had, if he didn't get rid of it right away, he was running for his life, and sometimes he'd catch the ball and get hit. And now, what did you guys do different this year on the line to give him more time? Uh, differently, I think we just had it. We had a lot of experience, for, a lot of experience from the old line, from um, me and Shane and Dorian. I mean, we we're all seniors, and I think that helped a lot. And then Brian Valen, Ad Brian Ader, they're all, you know, they all bought into it last year, and they're all, you know, just. Ex I think we had a lot of experience and. I think the, the new system that, that we brought in, you know, when it's easy for other teams to have a defensive plan when you're stepping back and passing 70 times a sure. game. And then this year, we're, you know, we're running a lot. So then they have, I think I'll, I experience a lot like the defensive linemen, they, they won't come hard. They just mm -hmm. sit at the line because they're not sure it's going to happen to them. And then, I mean, it just, we'd use our physical dominance. And I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's right, but yeah. you, you got to train well. Huh? <laughs> physical dominance. <laughs> With 2,000 yards and penalties. That's well, how does it feel to be a kind of a you know an unheralded type guy? You know, these three guys get all the get all the you know the headlines, things like that. But you know, you're down in the, you're down in the dirt there, and you know, just kind of getting things done. What, what does it feel like to be an offensive lineman? It feels good, you know, when you know they run the ball behind us. That gives us you know that gives us what we need to mm -hmm. feel good about the about the outcome of the game. So. I mean, I mean that's all I need is. Yeah. I mean, last year if they pass, you're like, I mean, for a touchdown, you're like, you're still happy. You're like, what do you do this year? You run, <laughs> this year they run power right behind you for like a 20 yard touchdown. You're like, you feel like you actually did something. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing about those guys up front, though, like Nick was saying, we simplify the pass. We threw as much. We simplify the passing scheme, made protections easier. I think. Mm -hmm. and the other thing was. They're big boys, mm -hmm. and we had very few holding penalties. If you look back on our season, very few holding penalties and a ton of pancakes, mm -hmm. a ton of kids getting punished. I mean, you watch tape. We'd stop. We're sitting in the quarterbacks watch tape. I always say, hey, watch Fox, watch V, watch Dorn, watch Shane, watch these guys just physically pound people. Mm -hmm. And the holding penalties were so minimal, it was, it was amazing. That was not where a lot of our penalties came from. Other places, yes, but not holding. <laughs> very, they did a great job. They were a great job. Up well, front. When you're down the bottom of the pile, do you do any of the stuff we've been hearing about? Twist a guy's knee or ankle or anything like that? Poke him in the eye, anything like that? No, I maybe I'll step on their leg a couple times. <laughs> 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 I 
of course, that's not true. We know that. So yeah, I'm just having some fun. Why don't you go ahead and pass the mic over to Rosie over there? Rosie, let's uh, let, let me ask you this question. This is a tough one too. Kind of talking about the new coaching change with the head coach, but now you guys went through defensive coordinators. You know, uh, like they're going out of style. Obviously, what four, was the adjustment? I think this it was year? four for four, wasn't it? Four, was it four and four? Your fourth got fourth defense or third defense quarter? Third. 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 Wow, unbelievable. And what were you thinking this year? You got Coach Creek coming in, obviously got the new head coach, new system again. Yeah. I and mean, you guys just got to be just all over the place. You've heard, you probably learned every different scheme there is. Well, actually, Coach came in with a 4 4 base defense, was kind of like last year's defense, except it was more aggressive, which mm -hmm. I liked because we like set back a lot last <laughs> year. It's getting killed, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what, what were you? What was new or different about Coach Creek that made him stand out? Because your defense has never been this dominant in the past. It's by far the best statistical year that, I, at least that, I, that I've seen in the last five or six years. And what was the difference between this year and previous years? Uh, Coach Creek came in most games well prepared, and like he knew what to expect. Most games. He wasn't prepared. <laughs> well, oh, okay. Bro. My bad. My bad, Coach. My bad. <laughs> yeah, but we did dominate this year. Yep. Like pass. Like way better than last year's. Mm -hmm. What's the big thing that stands out to you? The biggest difference in this year and the past, and, the, and the, that you've had, I guess, in the past three years. Uh, blitzing. Coach get mad, just blitzing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. And like Coach Creek came in. I, uh, I've all, the only thing I ever said to Coach Creek was I'd get in the headset once in a while and say, "Hey, let it loose. Whatever you want to do. If you want to sit back, great. If you want to bring it, bring as many guys as you can and let it go." And and he did whatever mm -hmm. we needed to do. And those kids played so sound defensively, mm -hmm. that they could do whatever they wanted to. And, and I think a big part, I really believe, is when you can go ones-on-ones -on -ones and practice sometimes, and you're seeing speed on speed, and we're fast. Mm -hmm. We're fast on both sides of the rock, but we're really fast on defense. All 11 cats can run. And when you got that going, there's a lot. It's, you watch highlights, and there's 11 guys just pounding people mm -hmm. and getting to the rocks. That, Rosen, the guy did an unbelievable job buying into a, a new defense again. Mm -hmm. They were great. Rosie, you, you haven't even seen your stats yet, but you ended up second on the team behind uh, Sam Sheringer in total tackles, and uh, you ended up with 51 on the year, assisted and solos as well. So you guys had a really big, big thing to do with the two. Um, one final question for you: What are you going to do next year? You won't be able to tackle these guys anymore, beat these guys up. What's going to happen? I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> be an adult now. Be, be an adult, adult huh? Pass the torch and let it roll. Yeah. Why don't you pass it over to James? The last James won't follow up. James, what are you planning to do in the future? You know, you've always kind of been a leader of the team. You know. Good, good press guy, good PR type guy. You know what are you gonna do now for your You're future? You're on the side of the van. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are. <laughs> um, well, I just uh, joined flag football league. There you go. So you know, hopefully we'll win a ring and uh, flag football. And you know, um, I think I'm gonna miss the, the competition. So yeah. I'm gonna try to find anything that I I can to get to go against somebody and something. So right now, I don't even know my job. Just make sure I graduate. But right now, yep. flag football is what I'm doing. <laughs> all right, all right. That's what I'm doing. How about you, Brent? Why don't you go ahead and answer that question? You're, and you know, you're a fifth-year guy, too, so yeah. it's going to be tough for you as well. Well, I really wish I had some more years left to play under coach. I learned a lot this year. And you know, even up until the last day of practice, he was still on me for a little mechanics and things that I haven't gotten down and no one and really in that game he should have thrown the bubble to denim on quarterback to Rod, just so you know that <laughs> exactly <laughs> just like that I mean I kept learning throughout the time and you know over the years like he stated before I haven't really been coached you know it's like get the ball off as however you can and you know I learned a lot this year and I think I would have been even a better quarterback if you know I had a couple more years under him and I think we would have been more successful just some learning the offense but uh I'd like to go on and play anywhere I can. I'm going to try everything I possibly can, see if I can get my name out there. And, you know, if all things fail, then, you know, I'll end up coaching because that's one thing I'll do in the future. Good. Let's go ahead and finish it off with Nick before we go to break here. we got about 30 seconds left. Nick, what do you think you're going to do now? Um, I'm kind of with the other guys, too, with uh, Brent. You know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try, try to go on and see if you get arena ball. I love the game, or, mm -hmm. you know. But I also have my major the backup on, too. But, you know, I'm just going to. You know, otherwise be a high school football coach, I wouldn't mind doing that. But, I mean, this year taught me a lot. You know, I think it helped me with the rest of my life with, with everything I learned this year. Good. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us today on the show. And uh, we're going to go ahead and come take a break, and we'll be right back with more on the Lake of Lackland. I love the challenge of computers. Not that I have much time with these little guys and my job, but when my wife went back to school, I thought, why can't I? Certain things in life demand my attention, but a new career in computer science deserves my attention. 
An evening class at Lakeland doesn't tie my life in knots, thanks to a flexible, easy to manage schedule that allows me to balance work, school, and the twins. Evening classes that meet once a week, that's the easy part. You know, we sing for millions of girls, but helping out in schools, that's the real deal, baby. I know our love can multiply. I'm the cute one, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever been backstage before? Cause you're the exit. I think you'll find that gravity is key in what I do. Once was one, but now we're two. I'm sitting at a <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, we're at back here at uh, the Lakeland College campus on the Lakeland College Pub. I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski. we got four new players up here, Z. Kept trying to grab the seniors segment. up. Johnny Ferguson of D-Lyman for us, Eric Voigt of DB, Rashawn Barron and Jeff Tapp, both wide receivers for us. And, right. and like I said, I wish I had time to bring all the seniors up, because really, in, in, in our program, they're the ones who led us. And you can just name off all the seniors, and they all contributed out a great job you know, for us. And that's a big thing for those guys buying in to what we're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. Well, let's start with you, Johnny. You got the mic here, so your defensive oh. end. He wanted me to say defensive end, not defensive line. I know. That's why I said he, said, you he know, plays so. bowl. He's multi-talent. <laughs> well, again, Johnny, you had a great year as well. You, got, you uh, um, had 40 total tackles overall. You really had a good year. Second on the team, tied for second on the team in sacks behind, behind uh, Nick Zek. Um, you had five, t five, five sacks overall. So what do you have to say about that? What, you know, you, you have that skilled position. I'm sure you're pretty quick, but what do you attribute to that with the new, new coaching system under Chris Creek again? Uh, with the new coaching system, I think it worked a lot better for me. Uh, regard with compared to last year, mm -hmm. where uh, we playing more, you know, uh, passive and whatever. And this this year is more go ahead and go get it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you go after the play. We want to want to be the first one to make the play. Everybody want to make the play, and I think that's why we pursued to the ball so well. Mm -hmm. Everybody was hungry for the ball. So. What is the difference between this year's defensive line and last year's defensive line? Because it just seemed again like you guys, you know, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but it just seemed like you guys were a mo more cohesive unit this year. And again, you guys were just quick to the ball all year long. I think we uh, understood the game a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, we were taught a little bit better, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, and just like I said before, uh, pursuit is like probably the number one thing in our defense. Mm -hmm. And we all were just so hungry to get to the ball. Everybody <laughs> wanted to be the first one there. And if you weren't, uh, you got talked about it, fans. So. <laughs> yeah, they let you know and, about it. And that. They, they do up now. They do a pursuit drill every day to start practice up right off the bat after we do our, our stretching stuff. We don't really stretch in this program, we just let it go. Mm -hmm. But when they go, the first thing they do is pursuit drill. If they're not good enough, they're doing up downs all, all the whole drill mm -hmm. until they get going. But I think the other big thing about the D line, we have so many kids that could play up there that you can keep rotating fresh bodies in. There are six, seven guys a game that we're playing. You just keep throwing a bunch of fresh guys up there and there are some beatings going on mm -hmm. and they did a great job and like he said coach Mature with a guy coach at, at Milliken <clears throat> he was an offense lineman brought him down as assistant coach coach D line and did a great job his first year had a great group of guys to work with he just said pin your ears back and let it loose you know and, and just blow people up as you go and they did they did a great job one final question before you give the mic over to Eric what are you going to do now you know you usually you used to get in the other we talked with Nick on the offensive side getting down and dirty on the line what are you going to do now well I don't know I'll be uh be graduating in December, Good. so uh, weigh my options a little bit, see what's going next. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to throw the mic over to Eric over there. I think, Eric, you're a youper, aren't you? Up yes, I am. Yeah, we won't hold that against you. But anyway, we got so a go good on. number of youpers, Webb. Yeah, you know that. I know, Youper I know. crew is cruising in here. <laughs> so, Eric, you, you were back in the defensive backfield. Uh, tell us, again, you know, we've asked the guys, obviously, the difference between this year and last year. And, and again, your defense was you know, so, much, so much better than last year and so much stronger. What was the difference for you? I think the difference was, well, team-wise, we had a winning attitude for once. Usually, everyone accepted the five and five record or six and four record. This year, the coaches came in and they installed a winning attitude, and that was the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. And they worked with us, and they had fundamentals, and basically, that's what it was. It was a winning attitude for once. Now we noticed that you only had one interception on the air. We, we heard that was because they threw the threw away from you. They were afraid to go your way. That's what I think it is. <laughs> they, they got game film. Everyone knows that. In our defense scheme, though, playing we play robber coverage a lot. We play base robber, and he is a quarterback of our defense. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and he's making all the calls and the adjustments and so on. And a lot of times he becomes the extra linebacker. So they they weren't going to throw, and they just couldn't throw that side a lot of the times. And but he was, he'd he'd come up on run. I think he had a great time. He could come up on run support and blow people up. So I haven't played deep third and just go back there and, 
I mean, he was very, but he was our quarterback. That's he was, he was, and he he came back. He battled through injuries. I mean, he got knocked out basically in Carthage. That's he played right, the whole game. Yep. Coach Creek and myself spent the night in the hospital with him. Coach Creek more than I did because I had to drive the bus back with the team and came back. But he came right back and played the next game. You know, part of the next game and away he went. Tough kid. Eric, what are you planning on doing now that your career is over? I'll probably be in school three more years. <laughs> <laughs> but you work here in the pub. I'll be you got you work in the, the pub, pub brother. Right? Tom and Maya. Three more years at least. Why don't you go ahead and give the, the microphone over there to Sean Barron. Sean, everyone knows he has the bird, of course, on campus here. What are you going to do? You're, you know, 33 years old now. <laughs> Hopefully they can find a spot for me somewhere. <laughs> what do you plan on now? I mean, obviously, uh, you had a great career here. You finished off. It was kind of a unique story, too. I think, you know, a lot of people don't know your background. Recruited as a baseball player and, of course, uh, you had some arm problems and you're a great baseball prospect, had some arm injuries. So then you turned to football. You're a good athlete overall. Um, and, then, and you came in and wanted to shoot for football and see what could happen there and ended up having, being a, a standout wide receiver for the Muskies. It was just an excellent opportunity that I was given. I just, uh, I came in and I, I never played football before. Mm -hmm. And I came in and I asked uh, the coach if I could play. I figured I could do it. Mm -hmm. And I came in and I did it. And uh, then uh, this year came in with Coach Zabrowski. Uh, and it's just been a great opportunity from there on out. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't learn a lot about football the last couple of years. And this year I feel like I know a little bit more about the game now when I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like you said. It's just been a great opportunity for me. And, and he's not going to talk very much. But <laughs> great story about Bird is, we're getting down to the nitty bit, the, to the crunch time. Are you going to play or aren't you? I had to go hunt him down to Home Depot. <laughs> he works Home Depot in August. I went to. Are you going to play or not? You know, bro, let's go. Uh, game time decision. That's his only answer. It's a game time decision. I might be there. On, we'll see. See me on Sunday, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> on check and date. I'm like, well, okay. All of a sudden, he showed up on Sunday. I said, okay, let's go, let's roll. So anytime he always said it, are you going to play this week? Game time decision. I'm a little <laughs> old, my body's a little sore, you know, I'll let it go. But when you watch him, once he really got his body was, was as healthy as it was going to get, mm -hmm. you know, those last couple of games, he was outstanding. I mean, you watch the Aurora game and the Greenville game and our, and our last game. I mean, the plays he made were, were unreal, some of those catches. And mm -hmm. you were always a big fan. What did you say last year? They don't throw the ball to Bird enough. You always said it, you're a big Bird fan. Yep. Yeah. The last couple of games, he was amazing. And he, he was the one guy, along with James also, but he really got into blocking. Yeah, by the end of the season, he's as excited for Marcus Denham scoring mm -hmm. as he was for himself scoring. Or anything, but he didn't care anymore. You know, If I catch four balls, great, but I'm going to blow that guy. Two out of the last three games, he came off the sideline saying, Coach, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in a fight. Me and 22 are going at it, just so you know. My gosh, shout, brother, shout a little bit, that's good. Just because of blocking, because going at it. You know, so he, did, he was great, he was outstanding. Well, Sean, you finished up with 38 catchers for 622 yards, 16.4 uh, yards a catch. And that's and, for a and, slow guy. Yeah, exactly. That's what he always said, he always seven, said he's slow. Seven touchdowns, of course. What I think was another unique thing, he talked about your toughness as well, too, is you know, people don't realize what some of these guys have to go through through the course of the season. What it was amazing, how many times you have to have your knee drained throughout the year, two or three times. I mean, and they were talking about they supposedly fill up jars full of fluid. That's the story, at least. I don't know, you know. So, <laughs> big thing is you just keep going at it. I yeah. mean, and just coming every day and going to work with the guys that we did, uh, the receiving core. Mm -hmm. It was great to come with the ten guys that we had. Uh, Coach Warsel, who came in after camp, but he was real great with us and. Uh, I mean, that kind of just keeps you going. And then the ability to compete on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just an honor to play with the guys that I did play with, and Brent Lukey and with Jeff Taff on the offense, and then Marcus coming in, and James Hayes is just guys that I've been with for three years on mm -hmm. the offense. And it just was a great opportunity, and it just kept me plugging away. Oh, cool. Well, congrats yeah. on a great season and a great career there, Bird. And let's go ahead and, and finish. And he is going to graduate in December. Going to finish just up so we in December. Just we always rip on being so old, but he's going to be graduating. <laughs> well, I thought we'd finish off with Jeff Tapp, who I think has been, uh, uh, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about him? Because I think there's some questions about some of the records that he might have, may have, may not they, have said. These guys know more. <laughs> Jeff, I know. I think Jeff's family knows more about records <laughs> than I do in this deal. I, you know, the kids, the last game, I think the fate he caught kind of put him over the top. I think he has the, the leading, I think he might end up being the leading receiver in the history of the school in terms of receptions which is huge because it, it was a throwing team. And I think that reception got him over. But great thing about Jeff, Jeff just every day, he, he's going to make plays. Yep. And, you just, and he, he was totally another kid who just said, hey, someday I'm going to block. I think early on in the season he caught one. I think he caught one ball against Tri-State, mm -hmm. one or two. I think he, yeah. might, he got one ball against Tri-State. And after that, he never knew how many balls he caught. And all of a sudden, 10, 8, 6, 4. But he was our big play guy, and, and he just made plays. And 
I think that I think he is going to end up being the career leader, you know, yeah. in the history of the school in terms of reception. And he just, his totals just kept going. You know, I'd start going honestly in a game plan. I talked to Coach Cancel, our old line coach, and say, hey, we just got to make sure, you know, Jeffs get a certain number of touches. He's our punt return, kick return guy. Mm -hmm. But we never game plan specific thing. We just let the ball loose and the ball started finding different people. But Jeff was outstanding. And you just love watching him because he never really gets stroke. He never really gets hit. He makes somebody miss, you know, and away he goes. Yeah, we call him a poor man Sir Barry Sanders. He didn't know this throughout the year. That's you what he said throughout the whole year. Uh, so that's right. 54 catches, 706 yards, uh, 13 over 13 yards a catch, eight touchdowns, um, 135 all-purpose yards to do everything, man, as Jim said. Um, what, what's it, what was it like for you this year? A nice, obviously a big change for you. Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I guess you know you're out there and all that stuff, but uh, beginning of the year I remember I always, I always had trouble, you know, cramping up and stuff like that, and I always did in high school. But we got over that. Yes, so we did. Got yes, through that did. point. Um, but you know, like, like everyone else has said too, and I'll, I'll probably say it again right now, um, that just you know, under Coach Brosky coming in here and this whole new staff, it's it's just been great for all of us. I don't mean to cut you short. We only got three minutes left in the show. It goes right, so fast. Well, you know what? Jeff's, <laughs> Jeff's never going to talk about himself, but he yeah. was out, and his family is. Out, I mean, we have so many great fans and mm -hmm. family support. I mean, his mom and dad might, I don't know what they're going to do without Jeff playing football. I I, I, they might still, I think they're going to come to all our games still. They're next gonna, year, they're just gonna. looking for Jeff out there somewhere. <laughs> what yeah, are you planning on doing now, Jeff? What's your next step? Um, you know, right now, I've got to, you know, start my job again, work at the Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. here. Um, like uh, Hayes said, I'm going to try and get that flag football league. <laughs> Maybe I can work that in my schedule sometime. And also, uh, I'm going to be help recruiting with uh, Coach Creek in the office, so we'll see how that goes. Good. Maybe, uh, hopefully, you know, play a little arena ball or something like that, try cool. to some different teams. If I keep playing, I mean, I'd, I'd love to do it. So. Good. Well, congrats all you guys on a great season. we got to wrap it up with Coach Z. we only got about two minutes left. Coach Z, one thing that, we, we, that stood out here is, hey, you just brought four seniors up with this group. The last segment, we had four more seniors. What are you going to do next year? I know, and we had four. We ended up with 15 or so, and I think what they leave with us is they leave with us those guys. They've taught the guys below them in a sense of years. This is how you play the game. This is how you got to play. Mm -hmm. You know, and they did. I think what helped us out a lot was we are old. In some areas, you know, we're losing 50s. But there are a lot of guys who played for us. There's a lot of different guys in different areas that ended up being, I mean, Marcus Denham was a freshman. Mm -hmm. You know, we have other guys playing that were, Quinn Brazo was a freshman. And our left side of the offense line were sophomores. And, and D-line, we lose Ferg and Luch. You know, two big losses. But we ended up playing five other guys who played. So, so they've taught the guys how to play. And, and I think the fun thing, well, after the Benedictine game, I let the seniors talk like I always do, and I just kind of, kind of eavesdropped a little bit and so on. And they talked about this is the start of something. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let this be grade eight. No, we got a chance to roll. And there, I told them you're a start of something really special. And these guys, I'm always going to be here, hold so close to my heart, because they led me into their little world for a year, and they, you know, we got a great opportunity to do a great job. Okay. But I think we have a lot of great young guys who learn from these guys. Okay. Well, Coach Z, I got to wrap it up here again, of course, and, and tell what else is going on in the Lakeland College campus. Congratulations to you and your staff and the players, of course, on a great season. And real season quick, Coach year. Kinsella, Coach Creek, Coach Roberson, Coach Warsel, Coach Kelsich, Coach Zablock, am I missing anybody? Coach Matera, I think. <laughs> they all did a great job. My staff was awesome. Okay. Well, of course, uh, again, the Muskie football team finishes 8-2, and two, the best record since 1997 when they finished 10-0. and 0. It's one of the top five seasons in Lakeland College history. So congratulations to the Lakeland College football team. Second place in the Illini Badger Football Conference, shooting for first next year. And the school's first automatic NCAA bid. Speaking of that, we had two teams that did get the automatic NCAA bid. The women's volleyball team earned their second straight NCAA trip. Of course, they had a nice tournament this weekend. They swept Marion 3-0 and they go ahead and move on. They're going to play UW-Whitewater in the first round. Good luck to the women's team. And the women's soccer team as well got their first ever NCAA bid. They won 3-1 over Concordia to get their first bid. They're going to go ahead and travel down to St. Louis and to Washington University. So thanks again for joining us. Thanks to TVA for bringing us out here. Thanks, for, coming the out for the pub. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the pub. Thanks for the pub letting us in. And again, we'll see you next time on the Lakeland Locker Room.